Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Had some issues in the last live, so I restarted again. This is the third time we've restarted, so I hope we are good. I'm going to try using my data instead of the Wi-Fi that I was on. So sorry if you guys were on the previous live and had any issues. Hopefully we are back in business because I'm not getting the notification I was getting. So I think we might be good. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, just give me a wave in the chat or drop a one in the chat if you guys are like can actually hear me and there's no like buffering going on. Um, hopefully we are all set to go because I'm not getting that notification. So anyway, hey guys, I missed you so much. I feel like I have been going for a really long time. Y'all probably didn't even realize it because no one knows or cares, okay, when you're not here, right? Um, but I know um, it's been a minute since I've been here and I could not wait to get back on and chat with you guys. Okay, cool. Yay, you guys can hear me. Thank you. I am McKinnon. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, yes, perfect. Hey, Siobhan. Hey, Jamaica. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys. Thanks for letting me know you can hear me. All right, cool. So um, yeah, I uh, spent some time doing, uh, for those of you who have been rocking with me for a while, you know that I send out a weekly newsletter every Monday and it is a devotional for entrepreneurs, side hustlers, and dreamers called Big Idea Food. Um, much like my book. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Marlena Banks. I'm the author of Big Idea Food, the weekly devotional for entrepreneurs, side hustlers, and dreamers. And I send out a fresh new newsletter every single Monday that has a new devotional in it. And um, for a while, I was coming on live just to share and talk more about the topic of the week. And I took a little break from that and now I'm coming back. So I thought this week was a really great topic to come back and talk about um, this week. The topic is stop struggle chasing your dream. I'm gonna give you guys a, a uh, give us a minute to let some more people come into the room, but I think this is gonna be a really good one. I got some really good feedback from my newsletter subscribers about this topic and just people who are going through some of the same stuff I've been going through as far as having a business while uh, either working a nine to five, considering leaving your job. Um, considering you know staying and juggling both you know we're all kind of in a space where we are figuring out how to pay our bills while we're building the business or building the dream um, for many of us and um, I have had some really good like mental breakthroughs <laughs> that I think are going to be really really helpful to talk with you guys about today especially those of you who are Christian entrepreneurs I think there are going to be some mindsets that are going to support you um, in if you are in that space where you're trying to decide like do I need to either get a job or is it time for me to leave my job um I think there are going to be some really good mindsets um in here that we discuss so take get you get comfortable hopefully pull up a little drink I am not going to be here super long either um my plan is to just walk through some of these mindset shifts that I told you I was going to talk to you about and then um take any questions so if you guys want to ask me any questions about what I share today or if you have um just ask me anything um I'll leave us some questions uh some question space at the end just to connect over um anything like that so that is the plan hey Leslie my babes is here um so yeah that is what we're gonna do so i am let me get, get my little outline together so we are talking about stop struggle chasing your dream yes girl you see the sun i tried to get close to the to where the the window and the light is coming in y'all and it's beautiful outside so thank you <laughs> yeah now. and that filter is helping your girl too so uh let's be honest but <laughs> it's good to see you guys i'm so glad you're all here we are talking about stop, st stop struggle chasing the dream and uh, I think this is going to be good. So I'm going to kind of give you a little overview of like what this is before we get into the actual meat of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yay, I feel beautiful. Y'all making me feel beautiful. So thank y'all. Love you guys. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about just catch you up on where I am right now and how I got to this area of stop stopping struggle chasing my dream. <laughs> um, and so uh, for those of you who don't know, I have been walking through a business pivot uh, in the last, I mean, 
it's been, you know, I've been in business now in this, in this leg of my business for going on five years. It'll be five years in May. And it feels like the whole five years has been a pivot, if I'm being honest, because I've been trying to figure out what is this business? You know, I launched a book and then I started to figure out things to make money after releasing the book, right? Um, and so it's been five years of trial and error and error and error and error and trial <laughs> that I've been figuring out uh, what this business is, what it is that I'm doing, what it is God wants me to do with it. Uh, and it's been a journey for sure. So up to this, up to the last, up until 2022, I would say up until, you know, the top of last year, mid last year, the way that my business was making money, the most money outside of like book sales, which haven't been like huge or anything like that. But the, my biggest income came from coaching income and uh, my community space that I was running, which I closed down, which if you want to learn more about that, check out the Big Idea Food YouTube, YouTube channel and I'll share all about why I decided to close down my channel uh, or my, not my channel, my community. But that had been what I was doing for the better part of the last five years is coaching and running a community. And I just through the work that God has been doing within me, just on my heart and mindsets around how I am really shepherding his people <laughs> at the end of the day, he's really shifted my mind from, you know, this isn't necessarily this, although this is a business, this is, you're really shepherding the people that I'm sending you. And that is a whole different mindset shift, right? We're going to be making decisions based on um, making sure I'm taking care of God's people. Not that I wasn't taking care of people, God's people because I always have, but it's just a different mindset shift. So anyway, God's been working on me the better part of the last two years. And uh, that has evolved into a realization that I needed to pivot in how this business existed. And um, in at the same time that God has been working on me, I've also been getting clearer about what it is that I want to do and feel led to do uh, to f exist in this world, right? In my purpose work and how I want to generate the millions that I, the millions of dollars that I see myself generating and how I want to, the work that I desire to do to produce the lifestyle that I desire and in the process of getting clarity on that, I've really come to understand that I want to, uh, I don't want to coach. <laughs> I don't want to necessarily run a community. My highest genius is writing and really breaking down spiritual truths like I do every single week inside of the Big Idea Food newsletter and inside of the Big Idea Food book. And there are more books that need to be released. So um, I have been really Re getting more and more aligned with the fact that I am here to produce and write more. And although I am great at coaching, I am great at building community. Writing is where I need to spend most of my time. So I'm, I've been navigating this, this pivot <laughs> that has started over the better part of these last two years. And, um, y'all in the, in the process of figuring out where, what the direction is and also kind of closing the chapter on what it's been so far. It's been difficult, you know, financially, right? Because it's like, ooh, I'm stopping this, but this hasn't quite picked up yet. So I'm like in this limbo space of figuring out how to pay my bills, honestly. And in it is in that process that, and I've been in that space for, you know, really the last year, 18 months or so of just like, ooh, money has been tight. I feel like life has been hard. I haven't felt like I've been living, you know what I mean? And it's just been a very difficult time in my world. Um, as I've been, you know, it's, it's weird because sometimes you're in that tension between like, I'm finally clear about where I'm going, what my purpose is, what I'm supposed to be doing. And then there's this, this path ahead of you to that you have to walk out to really get to that destination and been on this path y'all and it's it's been difficult uh, which is another reason why I haven't been here because it's just like woof. sometimes I don't know about you guys but when I feel lower energy I don't like to share that with people you know I want to bring y'all good energy all the time so so yeah it's just been a very interesting time of life but 
very clear on where I'm going and where I'm headed. We will be as a as a brand, Big Idea Food will be producing more um, books like the first one. So I have um, for our anniversary coming up in May, our five year anniversary, we are going to be releasing our suite of products that go along with this book. So if you guys are fans of the book, if you love the book, we've got some really beautiful pieces coming up really, really soon um, that will pair and be a companion for your book. Um, we've got an audio book coming. We have a study journal coming, which I am so very excited about. Like, I can't even stand how excited I am <laughs> about the study journal. Y'all are going to, when I tell you, you are going to just saturate your entire soul in that that product. I It's going to be so good. Um, so, yeah, we've got a full suite of products coming out in May for um, companion being, becoming a companion with the um, original paperback book. Um, and then we've got another volume coming out, if the Lord agrees, in the fall. Um, our next volume of Big Idea Food, which is going to be another theme, which I'm very excited about. So, making this pivot, moving into really producing products, um, moving away from coaching, moving away from community for now, in order to focus my brain and my bandwidth on producing the um, the ministry products that God has placed me here to, to write and to produce for you guys. Um, so in the meantime, where that is not yet generating the income <laughs> that I need, it's like, okay, what do I do? I'm, so I've been figuring it out, y'all. Listen, I got, I rented out one of my rooms in my home, not one of my rooms. I only have one other room in my, <laughs> let me be very clear. I only have a two bedroom condo. Um, so I had to rent out a room, which has brought in income. And I've also been blessed to be able to get a job, um, a part-time job with my mentors, um, who are people that I followed for years and had been in my soul to connect with at, at some level. And when I started to realize that it was time to get a job, um, they were in my heart to see if they needed support and uh, ended up reaching out to them. It ended up being a God thing for them. And for me, we just both really gelled and we I'm now supporting them in building up their coaching business that they are now um building up and uh doing some marketing and uh business operation support for them and it's really really great and it's been really helpful for paying helping me pay the bills okay um so i wanted to just share all of that because i want to talk about these mindsets mindset shifts that i've made in terms of stop st struggle chasing your dream because it took a lot of like mental like I went through a lot of mental stuff to even get to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to get a job. Like, okay, I'm doing it. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about with you guys. Cause even when I sent out the newsletter, I had several people write back to me and say like, oh my gosh, this is exactly where I'm, I've been. I'm, I am currently, this is what I'm dealing with. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about it and hopefully um, share some just from my own journey that may be supportive for what you are dealing with right now. So take what you can from this. Um, I also would love to hear if you guys, if there are any mindset shifts that I don't mention that you guys are dealing with too, um, that we can touch base on um, after I walk through these. So, you know, I'm going to walk through these mindset shifts that I went on and then I will open up the floor for any questions or just conversation if you guys are dealing with any of this stuff because I thought it would be really good to talk about it. Um, let me do a quick pause and check on y'all. Thank you so much, Leslie, for loving the transparency. Hey, Chelsea Bailey. Um, hey, Theology. Oh, uh, thank you. Was just talking about how people love us sharing our journey, not just the end result. Yes. And I think about that all the time. And like, it's hard to when sharing the journey can kind of is it get it can, it can get dark. You know what I'm saying? I know, you know, like it'd be dark. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to like put darkness into the world. <laughs> But people need to know, like, it gets hard. And so if y'all want to, you know, we can chop it up about, like, the darkness of my journey if you want to. Like, oof, because it's been rough. Um, thank you so much, Leslie, for supporting this live. You're my boo. Thank you so much, babes. Um, all right. So let's get into these five mindset shifts. Um, I only talked about one of them in my newsletter. And um, so if you're not on the newsletter, make sure you get on that. It's The link is in my bio. Um, to jump in to the newsletter and get a new devotional from me every single week. This week's devotional was about not struggle chasing, stopping struggle chasing your dream. And that, even that phrase came from a um, 
just a, a, a moment of revelation while I was doing my monthly review back in uh, December. And I wrote down in my journal, literally wrote this down. I released myself <laughs> from having to struggle chase my dream. And when I tell y'all, that was just like a really big aha moment for me. It was It was huge because like I said, I finally push myself to get a job, but it took a while to be able to get myself to like be okay with having to get a job. For those of you who don't know, I've been full time in my business since 2019. It's going on four years this um, this year. That's crazy. So I've been full time in my business since 2019 and I've done a lot of like leaps back and forth into entrepreneurship, out of entrepreneurship and back into a job over my like gosh, 10, I don't know, it might be 15 years at this point of my entrepreneurial journey. So this, the, the last time that I left my job in 2019, I thought that was it for me. I thought that was like, okay, we're officially always going to be full-time entrepreneur. Like I am done with working and here I am four years later. And it's like, nah, girl, you're going to pick up some contract work or something, child. We're we going to do something. <laughs> So, um, like I said, there have been some real big, just like struggle mindsets keeping me from doing what I need to do and, and getting a job, um, which I'm going to talk about right now. So, um, there, like I said, there's five of them. The first, yes, it is a tongue twister. <laughs> hey, Ozioma. Um, yes, it can get very dark. Um, so there's five mindset shifts I want to talk to you guys about today. The first mindset shift, and I think this goes with what I was just talking about, is believing that getting a job means I've given up or copped out or gone back to Egypt. <laughs> and so I don't know if you guys can relate to that feeling of like, am I giving up on my business, right, if I go get a job? And that was a feeling that I had like... And not even necessarily giving up on my business, but like giving up on the challenge of running a business. Like if I if I have to go get a job, it means like I I copped out. Right. Like, you know, like I, I took the, the easy way out, you know, and it's like, what? <laughs> what? What's wrong with that? Why can't we take the easy way out? Is ease not my inheritance? You know what I'm saying? So that was a mindset that I was really, really struggling with a lot. Um, and it was really keeping me from this, like, like doing what I need to do and getting work. Um, but I think an even bigger mindset was like going back to Egypt. And when I, what I mean by that is, um, if you're familiar with the story of the children of Israel, how God delivered them from Egypt, but they always kept wanting to go back to Egypt, you know, because it was easy there. It was, um, you know, all their needs and stuff were met. They didn't have to wait on God for stuff. It was just kind of like all there, but they were in slavery. They were in bondage. Um, and so for a long time in my entrepreneurial journey, I've thought of working a job as a form of bondage or slavery or a form of Egypt. And to go back to working meant I'm going back to Egypt. I'm giving up on God's way of, <laughs> you know, doing business and providing for me. And ooh, when I tell you, like, there's just so many, uh, this could take forever to unpack, but let me just talk, talk to y'all about like what helped me and how the Holy Spirit really ministered to me about it. Cause this was a real mindset that I was struggling with. Um, but in the process, I showed, I shared earlier in the live how God has been taking me on this journey of understanding that what I'm building is not necessarily a business. It's a, it's a shepherding <laughs> mechanism. I'm shepherding God's people with the, the work that I'm doing. And in the process of that, he's really teaching me how to love. He's been teaching me how to love myself and how to love the people that he has brought into my care in at, you know, in terms of the folks who you guys <laughs> who love me, who love big idea food. Um, and so in the process of what he's been teaching me, I've been learning like, you know, there is provision that ha that comes from him um, when we are walking fully in what he has told us to do and in obedience in that. And when we are walking fully in our love walk. Um, so there is a, a consistent rainfall that we can get from him when we are doing that and when we have sort of gotten into that space. And I, I know now that he has been doing this hard work in me that, okay, this is what I need to be doing and this is where I'm going. So I'm on that path, but not I haven't gotten into the promised land yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So um, what I in the process of learning that that's that promised land is that place of provision and I'm I'm on the journey of that I'm not quite there yet um but it is a process and so because it is a process the holy spirit it's like the holy spirit kind of ministered to me like you know what I'm saying it it takes time it takes time like you're not there yet so do what you need to do in the meantime while you're en route to the promised land um and something that he really hit me with was essentially being self-employed in my business, which is what I've been for the last five years, right? And I don't know if you guys know the difference between like being self-employed and actually owning <laughs> a company, right? Like you can, you self-employed is you still, you still working 40 hours a week in your business, right? And um, you are everything, right? You, you, you wear all the hats and all of the things, right? Um, and then there's the shift, right, where you go from self-employed to you are you are really owning something that you have been able to systemize and can sort of run without you operating everything. And so I have not entered into that stage yet. So what he really spoke to me was, ain't no real difference between you being self-employed or working for another company like you either way you're you're employed and you're not depending on my provision in my rainfall right um yes there's definitely a difference between self-employed and ceo um and so where i'm 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 in route to this promised land place where god's rainfall is raining y'all like it's it's pouring down i don't have to struggle um but in the process, you know, whether I'm self-employed or working for another person, either way, I'm not depending on God fully 100%. And that's okay. <laughs> it's basically what he told me. Like, it's okay. Um, I know where you are. I am here to perfect that which concerns you. And I know exactly where you are in your de- your place of development. And um, it's okay for you to do what you need to do in the in the meantime. And you can continue to struggle as a self-employed person or you can employ yourself and struggle a little bit less while you're maintaining yourself through through this journey so um that really helped me and I don't know if if y'all cared about going back to Egypt but I did so um I needed him to sort of break it down for me like that like either way you employed and you got a journey to go until you're really fully 100% living off of my provision um alone and not necessarily just um your the work of your hands So I don't know if that makes sense, but that was the first mindset shift, y'all. The second mindset shift is, oh yeah, this is a good one. (laughs) So essentially, let me see which one I want to talk about. Me not getting a job in the midst of like what I've been going through. When we talked about it getting dark, it didn't got dark, y'all. But me not getting a job in this season was the equivalent of being sick and not going to the hospital. And what I mean by that, right, is, you know, for those of us who claim to be faith people, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of promises in God's word that allow us to, that he allows us to access. Um, We just like we can access healing in his word, we can access provision in his word. Uh, All the things are provided in his word. And um, sometimes, although we can access it, we have not yet established a level of faith that we can just tap into it and, and get it right and really manifest it into our lives. And, you know, for the example of being sick and not going to the hospital, I don't know if y'all have heard of people like, you know, trying to live their faith walk and they're like, I'm just going to take my healing by faith and getting sicker and sicker by the day instead of just taking their medicine, right? And that can be very a very foolish thing to do when your faith is not yet at the level that you can actually secure that healing, right? And he he shared that mindset shift with me as it pertained to receiving provision from him. Like, yes, <laughs> there's provision for me in um in God's word. And yes, I have received it many a time, right? But I have not yet built the uh, faith muscles to be able to like receive it consistently on repeat yet. And so again, in the meantime, I can't continue to be foolish about the facts, which for me in the darkness I've been through, you know, Bill's been 
coming and ain't been enough to cover the bills. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with um, trying to get put food on my table. You know what I'm saying? Buy groceries. Um, make sure that my mortgage is paid and my house isn't getting foreclosed on. Like when I say dark, dark y'all, like difficult struggles. And, you know, again, we're talking about five, not struggle chasing the dream. You know, it. <laughs> me trying to sit here and, you know, faith it until I make it right, um, was not wise. It was foolish because, um, you know, just allowing my things to get worse and worse and worse instead of doing what I had to do to just, um, you know, get a job and make and pay the bills. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that was another huge mindset shift that I really needed him the holy spirit to minister to me and essentially he was just like if your faith isn't there to receive god's divine healing by all means you better go to a doctor and similarly <laughs> if your faith isn't there to receive his provision you're gonna have to do something about it until your faith gets to that level um for me that looked like getting some part-time contract work that looked like renting out my spare bedroom so that i can bring in some income um, and doing some other things to make sure that I can get some money coming in while I'm waiting to be able to just by faith <laughs> manifest my provision. Hopefully that makes sense, y'all. Um, let me know if you're just joining in. We're talking about five mindset shifts that um, we can take to stop struggle chasing our dream as it pertains to um, getting a job if you need it. Um, and also just in general, uh, as it pertains to going after what God has given you to go after and building the business that he has called you to build. So we talked about the first mindset shift, um, which is believing that getting a job doesn't mean you've given up. The second mind shift, mindset shift of being foolish about managing the facts while walking in faith. Um, the third mindset shift, ooh, this is a good one, y'all. This one is about essentially letting... Mm, how am I going to say this? Basically letting my ego tell me that I'm better at business than I really am. And y'all, this was, this is a big one because the way that this manifested for me was, um, and, and really this is about the fact that I have so much to learn, right? Um, the way that this manifested for me, um, was realizing that, hold on, there we go needing to humble myself to realize that there, although, again, I've been an entrepreneur in some form or fashion for over 10 years at this point, and I've been running this leg of my business for going on five years. And even though all this time has passed, there is still so much business <laughs> that I have yet to learn to really build a business literacy that I need in order to really build a viable business. And that just, you know, you can y'all know the saying of um you keep trying the same thing expecting different results <laughs> and it's like you know i've been running my business a certain way and just really like like i said a lot of trial and error which that never goes away right we're always trialing and erroring but over these over these years of trial and error and now that I'm finally clear on what I want to do in business, it's like, okay, I need to learn about this type of business <laughs> that I want to build. And I know enough now to know that I don't know enough to really make that successful until I get some more understanding about what that, what that entails. And so I could not continue to um, let my ego tell me that, well, I should know, I should know what I'm doing. Like, I've been in business this long. Like, I should know how to make this money or whatever. It's like, girl, yes, you've been here long. You know a lot. Um, and, because it doesn't have to be a but, right? And there's so much yet for you to learn. And for me, that looked like I needed to humble myself and really um, acknowledge the fact that although I... I, I need to not only learn about how to receive God's provision consistently, but I also have a lot of business and financial literacy to really learn for myself in order to build a financial, uh, in order to build a viable business that is thriving and successful. So yeah, humble yourself is number three, basically. <laughs> Humbling myself is number three. Uh, the fourth mindset shift is, oh yeah, trying one more last ditch effort. Y'all, I was... I was in this cycle for a minute. <laughs> I was in this cycle for a minute. So 
this mindset shift is really about like, okay, I know that all, these bills are due uh, right now. Um, I got this launch idea, you know, this new product that I'm releasing or I'm relaunching something or whatever. And that's going to be the savior of this, the situation that I'm currently in. Right. So I'm gonna do one more launch and then I'm gonna be on my feet. I'm good to go. And I cannot tell you over the past, <laughs> I mean, really the past five years, how many of those last ditch efforts I have done where it's like, I could go get a job, but like, let me just try this one more thing. Um, and every single time, you know, it, it does what it needs to do for that moment. Maybe it didn't always do what it needed to do for the moment. Like sometimes the launch didn't go well. And then the, the hole got even darker. <laughs> Cause who have y'all, I know some of y'all have experienced like a very tough launch that did not do what you wanted it to do. Um, and so I experienced several of those. I experienced some good ones too, but then still ended up, you know, right back in a space where it's like, Ooh, I got to do another last ditch effort thing before I can, um, in order to really survive and make it. And for me, I had to real realize that, um, and this is how the Holy Spirit is kind of just ministered to me in this area is that there is, I, I, there I desire to create actual generational wealth for my children. And I am 36 years old. And for me, speaking for myself, it's just time for me to start getting serious about the actual steps that need to be taken in order to do that. And continuing to think in terms of the next launch, right? Or that next last, last ditch effort versus thinking generationally about my children, my future posterity <laughs> and wanting them to be good. Just, it's like the Holy Spirit shifted my mindset to like, okay, it's time to start thinking longer term, basically. <laughs> and this could be a, a symptom of getting on the, you know, um, experiencing the second half of my thirties. But um, still, like it was, it was just time to start getting serious about that. And also realizing that the same thing applies about insanity. You know, at some point you realize that this is not working. This is not sustainable <laughs> for me. And if, and I got to do stuff that is actually sustainable. And for me, that looks like no longer trying to last ditch effort, a launch or a product or whatever to try to make ends meet. Um, but to now remove the business from having to take care of my needs at all. Um, and I think that has been a really, really big um, mindset shift for me is realizing that in order for my business to be what all that is meant to be, I have to, it needs to be able to, I need to be sober enough in my decision making for it that I'm making decisions for the business and not doing things just to provide for myself because the business, although it it is for me in the sense that it will pay me, <laughs> it's ultimately not for me. It's for you. It's for the people who um, it's built and created to serve. And if I'm making decisions to serve my, you know, immediate needs, I'm not... The decisions are different than if I'm making decisions based on what it actually, um, you know, the business actually needs. And for me, getting a job has enabled me to take care of my needs on my own with my money, right? <laughs> the job money, so that I can think soberly about what needs to actually happen for the business. And um, that has been really, really helpful for me. Um, in terms of my mindset shift, um, for, in terms of the, the, the number four mindset, sh mindset shift. So yeah, I'm done trying one more last ditch effort. I am off that cycle. <laughs> I'm off that hamster wheel. And um, now I'm in a position to think soberly about what the business actually needs versus what it needs to, in order to take care of my needs. So that's the fourth one. The fifth one is... Um, this goes back to the book, y'all. Anybody, any big idea food readers in the in the building, let me know in the chat. But um, the, the last final 
mindset shift that I went through is waiting on God to provide for me. And I know better than that because I, I don't know how many times I've talked about this. I've posted about it. It's in my book. Like we are not waiting on God. <laughs> we are not waiting on God. We're never waiting on God. Literally, my pastor says, all you have is all you need. And that is the, those are the facts. Like if you are having a struggle or something like that, like you have in your hands what you need to make it work. And you just need a mindset shift in order to see it a lot of times. And for me, um, that mindset shift was, I went from waiting on God to provide for me. And what that looked like for me is I'm going to continue to petition God for resources. I'm going to continue to, you know, use my faith to bring in provision, which you know, many times it works. Sometimes it's like, okay, God, we still waiting. <laughs> um, so that looked like me waiting on, you know, rain from the sky, more or less. That's the best way I can put it. Rain from God from the sky, shifting from that to wait, what has he already given me? And the Holy Spirit one day was just like, girl, like, do you know, look at all of your skills <laughs> that you have not only from your, you know, 12, 15 plus years of entrepreneurial experience, but even before that, when um, I worked in advertising, I worked in nonprofit, um, I have a ton of very employable skills. And Holy Spirit just sat me down like, girl, like, I've already provided for you <laughs> in the form of your employable skills. You can use those skills right now to go and make some money for yourself. You don't have to sit, sit up here and wait for me. I've already provided for you. And y'all know that scripture. Um, God has given you the ability, the power to get wealth. Um, that's what, that is what my case was too. And probably some of you too, right? Like you have something already in your hands. For me, it was my employable skills that can help stop the gaps, pay the bills, whatever it is. Um, while you are waiting to get to a place where, you know, your dream is funding everything. Um, so that was really, really big for me. And that was actually that that fifth one was the final aha moment that I needed to finally be like, let me quit playing and go get a job. <laughs> um, and I'm just I'm so thankful um, to God for blessing me with that, because ultimately and, and this is really the the end, I'm ending the, the call, um, the conversation around this. And then we can talk and share questions or if you guys have questions or want to ask me any, anything or just con converse around this subject. But, um, you know, stop struggle chasing your dream really for me and releasing myself from having to do that um, was just really about the fact that we, and for me, <laughs> Living this life is so important. Um, again, and this could be because I just turned 36, y'all. And I'm just like, you know, heading to the second half of my 30s. And some of some of us in here may be um, above that or below that. But wherever you are, many times we feel the, that pressure around age. Um, but I've been, I, and honestly, I've been feeling it too. Because I've, the, I've lived the first part of my 30s. Really haven't lived. I feel like I haven't lived it yet like fully and um, in large part because I've been building a business that has not yet been extremely profitable. And, you know, because of that, it has created limits financially to do some of the things that I desire to do and desire to live in life. And, you know, in the midst of the Holy Spirit sort of ministering all these mindset shifts within me, he's by by shifting my mind he's telling me like you don't have to do this like i don't know where in your psyche well he probably knows but you know i don't know where in your psyche this belief that you have to struggle to chase your dream was planted but we got to uproot that <laughs> you that is not a requirement god never put that pressure or requirement on you that you have to struggle to get to, you know, your promised land or your place of provision in him or to the place for me when I'm talking about my dream. I'm talking about um, living the lifestyle that walking in my purpose work affords me because it is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and I'm reaping the benefits of that. And so I think I have been bucking up against this mindset of it's got to be hard. 
<laughs> I gotta, you know, I can't, you know, there, there's no easy way out. There's no, and not necessarily easy way out, but there's, there's no lifelines. There's like, you just gotta grind until you get there. And I think that is r the biggest sort of myth that the Holy Spirit has reversed for me is like, you don't have to struggle. Um, I've given you everything you need um, to live an abundant life now. If you will stop thinking about what you don't have and look at what you do have and you start using everything that I've given you already. Um, thank you guys. So as I have released myself from struggle chasing my dream, I'm really releasing myself to be able to go after my dream and to do that in a way that is that still allows me to uh, live <laughs> a life that I enjoy, uh, that still allows me to make the the wise financial decisions and plans for my future children and the generational wealth that I desire to build for them. And I don't have to wait to do those things until I get there. I can do those things now if I release myself from this need to struggle. <laughs> um, so again, for me, this has been really freeing. Um, you know, and I, I don't mean, to, I'm not speaking about getting a job as if it's some savior, you know, and for all of us, that struggle looks different. For some of you, you may be thinking, you may have a job and you are dreaming about leaving <laughs> your job, right? And I think this is a good talk to have just to know about some of the difficulties that can come with that, right? Because that's what I did. Um, so that's, that's what kind of, I think I'm pretty much done with what I want to talk about today. So if you guys want to talk about, um, or have questions for me, uh, about this topic, or if you are dealing with considering getting a job and you're a full-time entrepreneur, or if you're considering leaving your job to go into full-time entrepreneurship, or if you are juggling both and have some issues around that, like feel free to share in the chat uh, and we can talk about it, chat about it. And I'll just like go through and see some of these, any comments real quick. Um, hey, y'all. Hey, hey, Marie. Hey, Malika. Brittany Will, what's up, lady? Um, yeah, if you guys have questions, drop them in the chat. I left my water far, far away. So I'll, if you guys have nothing <laughs> to add, I will close this out and go drink some water. Um, thank you. Grateful for your transparency. I appreciate that. Yeah, y'all. Transparency is one of my superpowers. Um, and just like, you know, Leslie at Work the Work was just saying earlier, the um, how we need more conversations where we're sharing the ugly and the real with people. Um, I don't want to get to because y'all listen. Okay, the wealth is inevitable. Okay, y'all, we gonna refer back to this live when these good when these bands is popping, <laughs> and we gonna be able to remember like, ooh, we had some hard times. Um, but I do. I want. I I think it's important to share in process and um, share the raw and the real. So if y'all like, literally, I'm an open book. So if you got questions, like, just I mean, it's your opportunity. Hey, bestie. Hey, Keila, my bestie's here. Uh, we're just wrapping up. We're basically just wrap, wrapping up. Um, but if you have any questions or you guys want to talk about entrepreneurship, business, or ask me anything, I am an open book. I'm just reading some of these comments. Oh, that was one of your declarations on your night page. I'm releasing myself from struggle chasing my dream. Um, no, it wasn't in, it wasn't my night page, Lizzie. It was um, from my monthly review. It was from my monthly review. But I'll be having y'all, if y'all know about Worth the Work, definitely check them out. They have these beautiful, amazing, um, the Overflow Journal, which is like my favorite product right now, um, that allows you to check in with your mind and your soul and just take care of you on a morning and nightly basis. I'm not explaining it very well, but check them out because the product is amazing. Um, hey, well, hello, Panda. Oh. It's good to see you. I, I remember you and know you. All right, y'all. Um, come on, inevitable. All right. So no questions. 
uh, as always, if you if you anything comes up or you want to share with me privately, you can always DM me because uh, I'll be here, even though I don't be posting. I haven't been posting lately. We'll get back at some point. <laughs> But I got my head down. Like I said um, earlier in the live, I'm working on finishing out the Big Idea Food suite of products that are coming in May to celebrate our five-year anniversary. So be on the lookout for that. If you are not on my newsletter, you will find out and be notified of everything that we have coming up. So make sure you go to the link in my bio to subscribe to my newsletter. I send out a weekly newsletter every Monday that is a devotional for entrepreneurs and creatives that will fill your soul up for the week. Um, but yeah, get on there so that you can find out any product, all the products information and get exclusive stuff from me and all of that good stuff. All right, y'all. Well, I think that is everything. So I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you again, hopefully next week. If I have a good topic, I'll come on next week and chop it up with you guys about that. Till then. See ya!